something different yet again. Today will be the Guardian role in particular, and like gods that are easiest to learn to begin with. Obviously, every god has its different skill ceiling, but we're looking at like skill floors. So, yeah, that's where we're going to start. Um, we're just going to look at the Guardians because Guardian. I feel like it's the role that quite a few people will go to when they uh, start the game because it's actually quite a simple role. It's kind of protect your team role, isn't it? Um, it also, keep in mind, because this is more targeted towards new players, Not th this is not necessary with the gods being built correctly. So it's also going to be a little bit of played into can the god play well with a build that isn't necessarily suited to it. Because if you're new to the game, you're not going to be able to build correctly, are you? It's just how it works. But let's get started with Ares. Surprisingly hard, because Ares, is a, as a god, you're designed to build one very specific way, which obviously with aura items. So if you don't know that, then you know, you're not going to build aura items and you're not going to get his maximum potential. But also, Ares doesn't have a, like a, an easy escape. He's very easy to catch out of position because of his... No mobility. Um, obviously, if you're wording him very tanky, he's going to take a long time to kill, but he is easy to catch out of position. Um, his abilities are relatively easy to use. I mean, chains, someone that's new to the god might not realize you can use it three times, although you'd hope they'd read that, and his two is simple, his three is like, you know, it's a current, it's super simple, and then his ult is just a big circle. So, like, that suits, that's simple, but again, it's just the the passive, the catching up position, the chains. That's why Aries is su surprisingly hard. His kit looks easy, but he's surprisingly hard. An easy, an easy to learn one is Artio, because this is one you can just roll your face on your keyboard and controller and just be like, I have value. Because you can even build RTO with different items to what, you know, you'd build her in support or solo. You can build her with, like, a soul gem or stuff like that. And it's like, she still does well. Um, she is easy to learn because she has so many abilities, it's kind of hard to mess up with her. And also, her kit provides a lot. You've got healing, you've got CC, you've got dash. Uh, you've got damage, you've got, um, I mean, more CC. <laughs> She's just got a lot. And then her passive as well, decompose, and her ult that provides her with movement and MP5 means that she's a pretty easy god to learn. Um, I'm going to put Athena in... Because the amount of bad Athena them have, I would put in easy to learn because it's just usually two, really. But because I've had so many bad Athenas, I want to put in a simple yet, but more complex. She's still very simple, but she's not as simple as Artia. She, uh, obviously, she has her dash. She has a short charge up, so you should dash through the wave. Uh, people might not know that to begin with, just like a passive. Uh, she has ranged autos, which people would hopefully figure out pretty quick. Uh, her two is obviously her strong ability. But the thing is with new players, is they probably won't know just to like walk backwards in a straight line, they'll probably like twisting and turning. And you just want to walk back straight lines so your, uh, your ADC or your mid can just hit the target very easily. A three, a lot of damage. And that's definitely um, my, an easy ability to use, you know, it's just a three, it's just a circle where they <laughs> you place it on them and then you toot them into it if you can. But um, then his, and then her ult is, her ult maybe would be the most complex thing about her kit. Just because it's, you know, it's like, you look when you first open it, you're like, "What the hell is this?" But then you realize, "Okay, I just gotta press on my teammate, and I'll go to them." But then it's figuring out, you know, oh no, no, that's skill ceiling. We're not doing skill ceiling; we're just doing skill floor. There's a difference. So it's simple, but a little bit more complex. Bacchus, 
Uh, Marcus is one that I actually was put it because playing him now is like well, he's super easy to play, but then it's like he's not actually easy. He's not like Ares, he actually has an escape, so we're gonna go with simple but more complex. Obviously, he has his passive, Dracomita, which is it hard? When we do need to back it, it's hard to uh, maybe keep it topped up because you're like, what the hell is this? Why is this going on? What do you mean? What, what, why am I being drunk? Um. I mean, his leaf and his bap are both pretty simple to learn. No, it's a, it's a leap. <laughs> and then it's a bap. <laughs> but then it's, and then it's learning how to use the one correctly, because it's, uh... Obviously gives you parts and uh, damage when you drink it, and it's important to drink it at the right time. It's all it's super simple, you know, it's a big circle. His, his, it's just literally the passive that makes him a little bit more hard than Artio. Kabraken, I'd say. Kabraken is pretty easy to learn, because it's just... His one just makes you stun, heal two makes you stun after you do more, a certain amount of damage, and... His three is just... A big circle. His ult is... Just some walls. It's a very simple kit. Um, obviously, it can be used a lot more like differently than that. It's not just that, but that's how like it's going to be seen to a new player. He's probably going to be quite damagey, which is fine. And he's probably because also the thing about Kabaka is his passive isn't something you need to worry about. It's super simple. So yeah, we're going to put him in easy to learn. Cerberus. It's pretty simple, but we're gonna actually put him in surprisingly hard just because Cerberus is a god that's only gonna thrive. Well, he isn't, isn't only gonna thrive in certain comps. He will thrive in some other some team comps rather than others, and they might never figure out why because of his passive with the anti heal. But also, um. Obviously, he has his leap, he has his breath, and he has his uh, spit. Spit's a kill shot, which is, you know, relatively easy to uh, dodge. He's got his breath, which is really annoying, but... He's really good wave clear, and good for getting your spit back up. And also, his leap, his leap's quite easy to, like, predict and do uh, dodge and then play around. His ult is also really easy to play around, especially when they're going to be new to the game. They're just going to walk at you in a straight line and just ult. It's going to be super simple to pre beat that, but... His... so it's like... He's not... He's not, like, super, super hard, but he's surprisingly hard. Because of... Just how much... Not how much his kit needs this passive, but how much... Passive, uh, uh, the effect the passive will have on a game because if someone's played their first like few games with like their healer on the enemy team and they're used to like oh I'm getting healed by their healer I don't know why but I'm doing it and then they don't have one the next game they might play too aggressive and stuff like that Cthulhu is another one that's going to go in surprisingly hard because I don't know maybe simple but more complex we're going simple but more complex because actually at the end of the day, it's only his passive. The fear stuff is it's not hard to understand, but it's not like, you know, the most straightforward thing. Um his one is you know, his one is a cone, his two is a Actually no, we're gonna find him a surprising hard. Okay, his two is a dash. Is his two is a dash or is his two is a circle? Either way, he's got a big circle, he's got a dash, and he's got a cone. His ult his ult is a little bit hard to understand when you first in it because like what the hell is going on uh but at the end of the day it's only a big circle a big line and a big uh big another big circle so it's not exactly like it's a hard ult to use but it's at the same time it's going to be confusing for a new player and then his passive is a little bit confusing to begin with because you've just got numbers in the bottom left of your screen you're like what's going on 
So, we're going to put him in surprisingly hard, even though he's actually not super, super hard. Okay, Fafnir. Not very hard. He's simple, but more complex. Maybe even just easy to learn. Uh, yeah, we're going to put him in here, because it's like, what's he got? He's got his passive, which is just have gold in your <laughs> gold in your pocket. Uh, his one's just a stun. His two is a buff. His three is a, a leap. And then his ult is a the, like the same things but just more applied in size. So it's like, hmm, he's actually not that hard. But the thing is with Afnir is he's always good and he's got a very high skill ceiling. His skill floor might be low, but his skill ceiling's a lot higher than quite a few of the. Uh, Easy to learn ones. Uh, Ganesh. Probably uh, simple but a bit more complex because maybe on Ganesh you're not going to realize necessarily how to use your role. Is like to secure objectives, etc. Because maybe you wouldn't be thinking, what, well, I use this all to secure an objective because, you know, I'm a support. Why would I do that, etc. But his, uh, the rest of his kit's really easy, you know. His, he's got a line, he's got a dash, he's got a, a silence. But then he's got his ult, which does quite a lot of damage, and he's got his um, his passive, where he gives gives kills to people. So obviously that's quite good as well. Geb? Geb, I'm actually going to put it surprisingly hard, because... Even though Geb, as a god, isn't very complex, okay, his passive is super simple, you just got 75% crit chance reduction, or damage reduction. His, um, his ability management is quite a lot harder than it seems, because your shield's on a long cooldown, your 1's on a long cooldown, your 2's on a long cooldown, and your ult's obviously on a long cooldown. So you've got long cooldowns. And you've got to make sure you use your shield for the right person at the right time. You've got to use your one to try and counter as many abilities as you can. And he's gonna you gotta try and use your two to either push someone away, push someone to you, push or just chase or or rotate or whatever. It's not a hard kit to necessarily understand, but it's actually a hard kit to make use of to begin with. And as you play get more, you get you, you know you get more used to it, and it's not as hard to use. If, if it was like me just looking at it right now, I'd be like, oh, Geb's really easy. Like, he's not a complex character. But if I looked at Geb as like a new player, I'd be like, what? What's going on? Why are my cooldowns like 40 hours? Um, Yorm's actually really easy. It's like, you can't be moved by CC, which makes him really uh, easy for new players because you don't have to worry about a lot of CC. He does, uh, his abilities are all really simple, you know, his one's just a circle, his two's a circle, his three's an underwater circle, underwater underground circle, his four just makes big circles, <laughs> he's just the circle man, and you got, as soon as you realise your two gets more damage, the more circles you're near, you're like, oh, circles, his autos are also really simple, so it's just like, he's super simple to learn, uh, there's not much... Like, uh, not much complexity to his kit. Uh, Capri, we put Capri in the highest skill floor, honestly. Because everyone picks Capri thinking he's super easy, but then it's like trying to use your ult is pain. I think we'll just, we're gonna put him in simple, no, we're gonna put him surprisingly hard just because everyone gets surprised. These ones aren't necessarily more hard than these ones. I think I should probably say that. They are more necessarily more hard than these ones, but they're surprisingly hard. The ones like, oh, they're super easy. Let's just pick them. Like, Capri's actually quite hard to use his ult correctly. It's... The rest of his kit, you know, it's pretty simple. You know, you've got a shield on his passive. you got a, a root, a pull, and a line. Like, it's not hard to use the rest of his kit. But his ult just makes his kit like super hard 
Tossy Bot, well, a lot harder. Because even now, I see Kepri's in my games that just don't know how to use his ult at all. And it's like, what? How How have you got to this rank and you don't know how to use Kepri ult? <laughs> Cumber's super simple, man. He's got a dash, <laughs> a line with a charge up, and he's got a circle. And he's got another dash. That's it. And when he dies, he just kind of he just takes more autos to kill. That's it. That's all this kit is at, at the most basic level. And it is a fun kit to use because you're so annoying. <laughs> Kuzumbo. I'm, I'm going to put Kuzumbo in the highest skill floor category. He's not like surprising he's not he's not super hard but at the same time compared to some of these other guys he's, he's not going to be super easy because the thing is with Kuzumbo is you've got to realize what your push does and what your how to get the max out of your kappa so kappa you get more out of bouncing it which people won't realize and you get more of your push if you push them into walls or into minions and that's so many people wouldn't realize this to begin with. But when you realize that, it's like, oh, well, that's just simple. Because now, to me, that's like, oh, that's that's just basic. But, again, we're looking at someone as, like, the, the new people. And would they realize that straight away? Not necessarily. His ult is super simple, and his 2 is super simple as well. You know, it's just press this when you're taking damage. And his passive is just take damage. So it's like, it's only because... There's, you need to do a little bit more with your um, Kappa and Push than you maybe first realize that he goes into the category. So back, um, the simple and it's just Pluck, Spin, Cone, that's it. It's not hard. Oh, and Big Circle. That slows people. It's not super hard. His passive is, you know, deal damage and you get props. So, it's a nice easy kit to learn. Nothing too drastic. Sylvanas. Um. Stick some stones. Sylvanas is a weird one. Because on the one hand, he's not too hard, but then he's really immobile, he's three, he takes quite a bit of skill. I think... I think cause just because he's three, I need to put him in like one of the higher categories. His immobility definitely needs to be taken into account, because immobile gods for like people that don't play, have never played the game before are going to be a struggle. So, I think I should put him in the higher skill floor, because he's... His, his skill ceiling probably his skill ceiling is really high, but it's also like he feels a bit cheesy to pick now in solo because of like mannequins, but they're not going to be putting mannequins more than likely. So it's like okay. So obviously, so then this is is one and his two pretty simple. His one's a plant and his two's a his two's a big circle. Simple. His three his ult is a big circle as well, but his three he's immobile while using it. And it's really easy to dodge, so you need to be really good at using it, using it through walls, that kind of thing. But also, obviously his passive has been changed, which means that's not a thing, but it's not really hard, you just pick up seed pods, it's not hard. But then it's like his immobility, because he's super immobile, because he doesn't have any um, uh, damage, not damage, mo movement abilities. And he's even more immobile because of his three. But he's also immobile because of his ult. He has to stand still while casting it. So that's, that's another thing as well. So he's not... Again, I don't think any of these are super hard. Except for maybe one, which we haven't done yet. But... Yeah. Terra... Terra's uh, simple but more complex. It's... She's just kind of, she's super mobile, so she's not got that going against her. She's got healing in her kit, she's got a stun in her kit, she's got a root in her kit, she's got 
a really nice ultimate that you just press when there's a bunch of people around you just press triangle and oh my god everyone's got rocks um she can do a surprising amount of damage she can be knock off immune when you place down um things place down uh abilities but she's not like so hard to understand that it's like the highest skill floor section there's not anything too hidden in her kit i think the highest skill floor have like almost hidden things so that's that's why she goes in that one um jing chan easy to learn he's super safe you know it's your one your one does damage your twos are knock up and root and your threes are jump and your four is a big spin that's it it's super easy to learn nothing too crazy Nothing no needs to really be said. Oh, and his passive, he, he, he heals from. Yamoja is definitely the most complex character on this list. Because while she's probably, like, the best guardian, she's also the hardest guardian. Because... A, you've got Omi, which is completely different to mana. So that's already going to confuse people. Like, what? What's going on with this? Why have I got 10 rather than 100? Her abilities aren't easy to use. Like... To begin with, like you're not going to understand how the three works and how you knock people back with it, how you propel yourself forward with it. You're going to definitely knock yourself back and propel them forward at points. Um, you're not going to understand how to press square about 400 times a second, because that's, that's the thing. Um, her, her squares are definitely her easiest things. Her two is quite easy as well, but it's maybe the three that just makes her super complex. And then her ult, you've got to understand how to use that and how to... Give the most value of that, uh, but uh, you still got to understand how to use the ones effectively. You know how to intoxicate and stun people continuously. Provide CC. But yeah, like Yamoja is definitely the highest skill flawed god of any of these, and Ymir is Ymir is the one everyone goes to, even though he suffers with immobil uh, immobility. Uh, immobile being a it's immobility in it, but he is immobile. But at the same time, he has a lot to counter his immobility. Like Sylvanas, kind of does, but at the same time, he doesn't have a wall. A eh? he doesn't have a frost breath, which is a stud, a super simple to hit, a super long. I didn't have a one which slows. He has a one which roots, but people can. Avoid roots simply, but people can also avoid Ymir's stuff easily. Again, but again with Ymir though, is is um he's immobile during cast, but people are also more scared of Ymir than Savannah Salt. Even though Savannah Salt does a lot of damage, and people don't seem to respect that. Ymir does a lot of burst damage, which people really don't like. Savannah Salt is very this is dot, so it's not going to be seen the same. Uh. <clears throat> Anyway, this has been my list. This is very much my opinion because I was trying to go back to like as thinking as a new player, um, and I don't necessarily agree. I wouldn't agree with this now, like as if if this is me doing it, like me as me now. But I'm trying to think as me as me when I began because there's a lot of differences. Because, like, who's a to be now would nowhere near be the highest skill for. He'd be super easy. And someone like Cthulhu, to me, would be one of the highest skill for. Or maybe a Geb and a Kepru would be down there. Because they're, they're, not, they're easy. But then they're also really hard to use the higher you get. Because it's like, well, why aren't you shielding me right now? Well, it's because I used it then. Well, why did you use it then? Because this person got low and was CC'd. Okay. The one he won me because I used to do that. It's like, you gotta manage your abilities a lot better at the, high, the higher you get. So, this has been my list. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.